What is up everybody, Dan Dan the Fireman here, and we're gonna go over some simple rules to keep you alive on the motorcycle. So first and foremost is risk awareness, okay? You have to be paying attention while you're riding and recognizing situations where you feel confident, and at the same time, recognize situations where you're anxious, okay? So are you anxious at, let's say, an intersection right here? Intersections can be pretty scary. I mean, you got a lot of traffic, you got a lot of debris right here. You got a lot of things that can come out and kill you. Okay, so if you're anxious there, that's a good insight of what quite possibly you need to kind of get over because motorcycling in town involves a lot of intersections. And when I say get over, that just means getting more experience, getting more practice, understanding the risk, how to mitigate the risks, and then you'll feel better and this will keep you alive. So do you feel good at, let's say, riding in a parking lot? If you feel good at riding in a parking lot and practicing in a parking lot, keep doing it. Keep practicing, keep practicing until you get to the point where you're like, I could do more, I can do more, I can do more. Maybe practice and do more advanced skills in a parking lot because that's where you feel good. You feel confident, you feel like you can take on things. So keep doing that. If you're anxious with traffic, start learning about how to to get over that by learning proper riding techniques. Like right here, I'm off to the left and I'm opening up my own vision. I can see around this car now and I can see what's coming up and if he has to stop because of let's say an animal runs in the road, I can see that already and then I can stop before he even applies the brakes because I'm paying attention and he's not. Maybe. Ooh, watch out here guys. This is why paying attention is very important. Intersections, everybody. Car accidents. At intersections people turning left in front of motorcyclists is the most dangerous thing out there for motorcyclists and stuff so now I got to pay attention to this guy behind me I'm doing a risk assessment right now because maybe they're paying attention to the car accident not paying attention to me and running into me risk management how do we manage external threats so external threats like this car that just got in a crash and you know hitting somebody maybe possibly hitting me so an external threat will definitely be other roadway users other people on the road whether it's a motorcyclist whether it's a car whether it's a pedestrian whether it's an animal whether whatever it is we're talking about the physical things that are on the road also think about surface conditions if there's cracks in the road tar snakes tar snakes are these things that you, i don't know if you can see i'll put a thing up wet paint wet road gravel all these different things how do we get rid of that how do we manage that and that is basically having escape paths okay so right now i feel like i am far enough away from this car in front of me that i can apply the brakes and stop in time if i have to but i also can swerve to the left and pretty much lane filter between oncoming traffic and this car remember it's an emergency move and it's an escape path you only want to do it in an emergency so i will take that risk so i don't hit somebody if i have to i also have an escape path to the right onto the shoulder now if you don't think you can handle that See, look at I'm on the shoulder, I got plenty of room. I'm gonna get back before I get in trouble. Could be dangerous driving, but you got plenty of room on the shoulder, so I could definitely move over if I absolutely have to. So how do we manage internal threats? So that's what's going on in our head, okay? So we gotta ride within our limits. In EMS, and I know a lot of you guys are EMS related, so you probably will understand this, but we talk about scope of practice. Scope of practice is basically like parentheses around what you can do, okay? So if you go below your scope of practice, you're not doing what you're really supposed to be doing. And if you're going above your scope of practice, you're definitely not doing what you're supposed to be doing. To put it in a motorcycle perspective is that if you're not trained to go up a mountain, let's say Mount Lemon and go ride like craziness or go to a track and ride as super duper fast, if you're not trained in any type of uh, skills that pertain to that, you're going outside of your limit. So how do we train for something like, let's say going up Mount Lemon and doing a bunch of really crazy curves, you know, different declines, inclines, you know, very crazy switchbacks, decreasing radius. How do we do that? Well, look at this. We're on an easy curve. We're on an easy turn. I take Nikki to the PO box. That's where I'm going right now because this is an easy road and we're practicing her counter steering. We're practicing all these different things on an easy road. We can gradually move it harder and harder and harder and harder to where now when she goes up Mount Lemon or if she does anything like that, it's easy for her and it's not scary. She has confidence in her skills and in that way we can actually enjoy it. Because I don't want to take her up there right now and it's beyond her limits and she possibly crashes or she doesn't like doing it and therefore she'll never do it again. And we're here to do this for the long haul and we're doing this to uh, keep herself safe and alive. So. Let's do it nice and neat. Let's do it easy. Let's start off with something like this. Practice, 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 and move up, move up, move up. 
okay? Also have an objective view of your skills. If you're not objective, first and foremost, let's go back a little bit. What is subjective, what is objective, okay? So subjective is what is your perceived opinion on a subject. Objective is the actual facts stating what that subject is. Oh, we got a bunch of writers coming up, it's pretty cool. So have an objective view of your skills. So if you know for a fact you cannot take turns, then do not go up, oh, that was a Ducati Scrambler, do not go up a mountain like that. Now if you think you can, you're like, oh no, I'm good, that's subjective. So maybe get somebody else's opinion, maybe t take a quick look at how you're actually riding if you're going wide on these turns because you're not counter steering enough. These are easy turns, if you go up Mount Lemon, it's gonna be a lot harder, so watch out for that. I use Mount Lemon a lot, but it could be any mountain that is near you. Mountain riding is where I'm kind of talking about. This is why I like my rock form. This is Ram Mount is crazy. So guys, if you want a rock form mount, Dan Dan 25, 25% off. All right. So risk assessment, risk management, and then now we're going to develop motorcycle skills. It sounds an awful lot like C, search, evaluate, execute in the MSF. We are using our brain. We're looking and seeing. We're trying to figure out what our problem areas are. We're doing a management portion where it's okay, now we gotta start a plan. We gotta practice, practice, practice. That is kinda like the evaluation part of C. Now we're doing the actual executable areas, okay? We're actually gonna be doing this. So yes, we need to get well-developed skills. Well-developed skills only happen if you go out and practice, okay? It's great and all that you did an assessment, you know what you have to do, but now let's actually do it, okay? So recognize where you need to work in your assessment area so like I said, intersections, parking lots, uh, curves, straight roads, getting on the interstate, whatever it is. Now go out and practice it. So go out and do it, do short spurts. So if you have problems with the interstate and you feel like you're gonna fly off the bike, you're like holding on, you're like, oh my gosh. Start learning how to correct that. Tuck in your knees, tuck in your legs so you get less of a wind drag. Kind of duck down just a little bit and stay loose up top. Since you're tucking your knees for the less wind drag, you're also creating a nice grip on the on the on the bike okay you're also getting a nice grip so now when you're riding on the interstate you're nice and loose so that's just one example but there's other places you can get resources now ddfmcrew.com has a great resource that's my own website i put together where i talk about a lot of parking lot stuff to get you started in riding now i also recommend motojitsu.com he has more of the advanced stuff and those are the things that he's very good at. Those are great resources for you to, to practice, to practice, 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 so you can find your, what are you doing? You can find your trouble areas and work on those. So let's recap real quick. You're gonna assess the risks that you have, whether it's a parking lot, let's say a gas station area, there's a lot of traffic moving and traffic is scaring you, or go into a parking lot, interstate, all that stuff. So risk assessment. Then you also have risk management. So we're actually going to figure out what it is, have an objective idea of what we're doing, how to fix it, have a plan in place of what you need to work on, and then go out and develop those skills. And like I said, the best resources that you're gonna have is ddfmcrew.com, motojitsu.com, and if you're in the United States, msf-usa.org. That way you can go take a class, okay? And if you're in Arizona, take a class with me at Ride Arizona MTC, or take a class with anybody here at Ride Arizona MTC. I highly recommend them. I love the people there, and uh, just go do it. With that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll see you soon. I gotta go find a parking spot. Uh, let's do this.